The pole axe is a weapon that makes fear to every opponent. Pointed spikes and thorns of steel protrude on all directions. A heavy axe blade and a spiked hammer crown the sides of the weapon. Like a Swiss army knife, the various components of the pole axe promise a complex and versatile use. But as with most slashing, cutting and thrusting weapons, speed, power, precision and distance management are the most crucial components in combat. They can only master it through repeating sparring and yet different techniques give a duelist the advantage that can make the difference between life and death in a duel. Whether it is a classic pole axe with an axe blade and a hammer sight, a lucerne hammer with a curved spike similar to a raven's peak, a halbeard or a billhook, the techniques are very similar and applicable to most pole weapons. A skilled opponent rarely exposes himself during his attacks. A strike or a thrust is not just an attack, it also covers one side of the body. A strike can sweep an attack aside and a thrust can put the pole axis shaft between yourself and the attack. The first technique we want to look at is a thrust that goes over or past the opponent's guard. Raising your backhand and rotating your body allows you to change the angle of attack and thrust over the defense movements. When you raise your weapon threateningly above your chest to strike, be sure not to grab the end of your pole axe. Hold it in the middle, with your arms spread. It doesn't matter which side the hands are facing, it is up to your preference. When you strike, the backhand slides down to the base of the pole and extends the reach. The white hand position also allows you to step with the pole axe base bike. The two attack options allow you to work with feints that intertwine fluently. Raising the weapon is a typical feature of heavy blows to the head and encourages the opponent to arm themselves against them. Pulling his pole axe up to the block opens him up to a thrust with a spike at the base at your pole axe. Using the spike at the base of the pole axe is also suitable for counterattacks. From a high block you can step to the groin if you counteract your reflexes and don't avoid the opponent's blow backwards. Steps to the groin are highly effective in wrestling and pressing in close combat, especially in uneven terrain, simple pushes and hard thrusts can send an opponent to the ground. Reducing the counter pressure is therefore often not an option and the options for hitting with an axe or hammer are limited because there is no space for swinging a powerful strike. Even hits in the armpits have no effect against chainmail. The raising up and subsequent thrusting to the groin gives the opponent painful experiences. Another stance for using pole axes is to turn the weapon in your hands or twist your body so that the spike at the base points toward the opponent. The pole axe becomes a spear with a better weight distribution. If you step your opponent with the conventional tip at the head of the pole axe, 
then it can happen that the cross between the axe and the hammer side gets stuck on the opponent's impenetrable armor. Another advantage come in place if the thrust misses. Now the axe and the spike on the head of the pole axe is used as a weapon in close combat. The wide grip in these stances also allow a better control of the opponent's weapon and to wind in. The wide handle also allow the backhand to slide up to perform steps and strikes with the head of the pole axe. Both the spike on the back and the spike on the head of the pole axe can be used for one-handed thrusts. One-handed thrusts increase the maximum range due to the rotation of the body. It is therefore recommended to use it only when standing outside of the range of a conventional two-handed thrust or strike. Extending the arms to the sides also allows one to step around the opponent's guard. This is even possible with two hands on the pole axe. When thrusting, the backhand is pushed under the front arm or armpit, while the front hand slides down the shaft. In this way, the stabbing is done around the guard and at the same time the armpit area is protected by the arms and the pole. A thrust to the hands looks unspectacular, but can have a devastating effect if the small target is pierced by the spike or the axe. A successful thrust to the hand also prevents a hit by the opponent and can be also used defensively. The so-called cross, the connecting piece between the axe and the hammer side, can also be used for blocking and pushing. It should not be forgotten that the tip of the axe can also be step and penetrate the blocked target. The target of a step to the arm should not only be the block. In the best case, the point of the spike is simultaneously rammed into the crock of the elbow or the upper arm. The cross of the pole axe is not only suitable for blocking, primarily it is to hook someone or something like the opponent's pole axe. A deflected strike from above should be directed downwards to the side. Before counterattacking, the opponent's weapon should be guided backwards as far as possible so that the lateral deflection becomes a pull backwards and downwards before striking or stabbing oneself. Trying to guide the opponent's weapon always creates a counter pressure on the opposite direction. If you try to guide the opponent's weapon to the side, he will try to counter and push his weapon to the other side. This way he will automatically block the counter attack. If you pull the opponent's weapon, he wants to pull backwards. So when you pull back, the opponent's pole axe will not get in the way of the counter, but will even guide the point of your pole axe into him, your target. To avoid binding and possible hooking on your weapon, a lower guard is often used. If necessary, this can be quickly switched to the middle guard and stepped from below. A threat from below is usually more dangerous in armor than from above, as steps get under the plates. The lower guard is especially suitable for hooks to the leg or the arms. When hooking limbs, the primary aim is not to knock the opponent off his feet. But remember that the lower side of the axe also has a point that can dig into the flesh to the back of the knee. 
While hooking you are unprotected and historical sources advise your opponent to step and strike your weak points without being distracted by his own injury. If you hook an enemy limp it is therefore advisable to turn sideways and avert your visor. When hooking the arms the aim is to pull the opponent forward just a little bit and let him run into the spike of the polex. Converting a missed strike into a hook can also give you a good step. One component of the pole axe that should not be underestimated is the pole itself. On one hand for blocking, on the other as a lever in wrestling. If one succeeds in stepping behind the opponent's leg, the weapon can be used as a lever and applied to the opponent's head. The throw itself is made over the leg of the opponent's back. From here the techniques of Ringen begin, which are also relevant in the fight with the polex, but these find a place in another video. The polex is a wonderful, versatile weapon and combines spear, axe, warhammer and a dagger as well. It is the only weapon that can compete with a longsword in terms of versatility. The only problem of a polex is the shaft. Even in historical sources shafts often break. Having a long sword or at least a dagger at your side is therefore not to be despised. Ja.